Let the church say amen. We don't have any birthdays. We don't have any anniversaries for this week. But we do have a reminder for our church fellowship on Saturday, August the 13th. We're asking that everyone that has not signed up that would like to go, please do so today. The cutoff is this evening at 12 midnight. <laughs> you know, you got to have a deadline. You got to have a cutoff. We can't just continue to go forward. But right now we're looking at about 75 people that will be going. So that's a good amount. So let's put our hands together and thank God for all of those that will be going. The caterer, she's been working and we got a, the menu all ready and set. All you have to do is come sit down and enjoy, have a fun fellowship time. Isn't God good? He has made a way for us to do this. So if you know of anyone else that might not be here, those that are online, we have... Um, mentioned that you can go on anointedgroundchurch.org website and go to events and click on that button. 12 midnight is the deadline. So we're going to stay to that because we definitely need to know how many so uh, the caterer will be able to prepare for that. But we love you. Thank God for you being here with us today. For the youth that are here today, they will be going next door after service to redeem the Anointed Ground Church bucks. And then on next Sunday, for the youth that are in service, we'll be getting some additional school supplies. I told Pastor this year has, summer has gone by so quick and children are getting ready to go back to school. So we pray the safety for them and everybody have a wonderful, great year. And you know what pastor likes to do every year before going back to school is have a special prayer over our youth for them to have a great year, a protective year and wonderful year. So we ask that all of those youth will be in church on next Sunday to have your prayer, number one, your covering. And then we will definitely give you some additional school supplies for you to be able to take on your way back to school. Let's give Pastor a hand this morning. Uh, church say amen. Let God's people shout hallelujah. Isn't the Lord good? And his mercy endures how long? Forever. It's good to see each of you this morning. We thank God for your presence. You know, God is just awesome. And we are just so appreciative for everything that he does and how he keeps us and he brings us back, you know, from one Sunday to the next, from one Bible study to, to the next. It's just a wonderful experience to see each of you and thank God for your presence. There's a lot going on, of course, people out, people doing, people going and so forth. But you didn't think it was robbery for you to come out to the house of the Lord and to give God the glory. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Exactly. He is worthy of our praise. Now, we had some members that's been out for surgery and different things like that and different procedures and so forth. But yet they are here too. So I just want you to know God is such a good God. We love him. And we praise him. You know, that Bible is a very wonderful book. And God is giving us that Bible for us to read, to study, and to, to, to also use as examples. And then we get the awesome privilege, as Pastor shared before, of, of reading about the lives of other individuals. And seeing how things came out, how things developed, that's a privilege. You wonder why all the different stuff that God put in the Bible, everything in the Bible has been inspired by the precious Holy Spirit. Amen? I say everything. I mean, some books, you know, are, boy, they are scary. <laughs> some books tell you about everything they did before Jesus and some of the laws they had you know you go back in Leviticus and all that stuff they talk about uh, the laws that they had to keep you know, you, can, you know people fall over in caskets and stuff now you know you have funerals they fall in the casket back then they, if that happened back then they would be next you wouldn't allow to touch dead people so many things that this is in that book and you wonder why did God put all this stuff in this book different stuff you read it you think about Ezekiel we, uh, I know we had a little lesson on that and what 
in the world is a valley of dry bones have to do with my life. There's something in there for somebody. Ezekiel said he saw a wheel in the middle of a wheel. People are taking that instead of flying saucers. <laughs> UFO, but there's something in the book. Can you say amen? But it's when we get past that and when we get into that book called Revelation, that's stuff that's yet to come. That's stuff that, yeah, and you, you would think we need to just close this out with a good ending. Uh-uh, that thing closes out pretty rough. Amen. It's for those who are not raptured, they'll be stuck here. And it's pretty rough what that book describes. It says you can't even buy or sell unless you accept the mark of the beast. And so what are you going to do? You can't fast that long. What are you going to do? What are people going to do? What are they going to do? That's in the book. I mean, Pastor, I'm not making this stuff up. Then it talks about horses, different color, pale and black. And they represent death in some situation. And how men would die. They talk about locusts that can sting you and, and they talk about the fact that people are going to pray to die. They're going to pray to die and can't die. I don't know, you, I mean, y'all better get in that book. Y'all better read that book. There's some stuff in that book. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying, if you are observant and if you are discerning, you see we're in another season. Amen. Can you say amen? You see that it, even though I know they said the worst of this stuff is behind us, but you still can tell it ain't just back to normal, is it? It ain't just back to where it used to be before the 19. You know, you know, it, you know, so you can still see that we're in a season. And we can't just we can't just go with business as usual and think that we can make it through what we're going through. No, we're going to have to have God. Amen? Because it's now that we get a chance ourselves. We can close the book. Read about how people were crucified and martyred and how people were stoned and imprisoned and how they went through suffering and so forth and different things. See, and that's what Pastor said. I never wanted to be a pessimistic preacher or nothing like that. But I, I wanted to be honest with you. You can't tell people all the time that you know all you're going to have is cake and dessert. Amen? Amen? Everything's going to be peachy and cream. Everything's going to be good. Look, isn't that some stuff? Look at, look at what's up. Look at how things are. Look at inflation. Amen? You can have two people with two good jobs working, husband working, the wife working. Good jobs. Can't even afford a home. Come on. So what is that, Pam? It's setting up, family. This thing is setting up to it. it people going to realize it. Hey, 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 hey. Let me put it this way. The church ought to be full. Amen. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to make it without the help of Jesus. The church should be packed out full, whatever. I know we got people online, and I know people are still doing certain things, but I'm just saying, if there's ever been a time to need Jesus, that time is now. And let me tell you something, too. It ain't going to be as quick as they think. If they think we're going to just brush out, they're going to raise interest rates a little bit, you know, pass and watch that stuff. If they think that's going to just fix it real quick, the devil is a lie. Then it ain't going to be fixed real quick. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Someone shot says, as long as it takes. That's what Pastor preached last time you heard Pastor. That's what I preached. You, 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 if you're going to be comfortable and rest in God, you're going to have to realize as long as it takes. 
we as a people are going to have to come together closer than we have ever before we're going to have to depend on one another ever before a lot closer amen I'm just talking I'm just talking it's a little bit after 11 I have plenty of time to talk I would have heard an amen on that amen <laughs> but family when you read that Bible there's just a lot of stuff in there but I want you to understand something God's chosen vessel Paul who wrote most of about a third of the New Testament Philippians, Ephesians, Corinthians spent time in prison what's up with that chosen vessel God loved him and he still went through some stuff somebody say still go through some stuff doesn't mean that God has forgotten you doesn't mean that God doesn't care for you you just go, stuff happens. Paul, you're the man. They, you're going to write Ephesians and Corinthians and 1st and 2nd and 3rd Thessalonians. Paul, you're the man. For all this stuff you're going to write. What are you, what's your request to God? God, I got a thorn in the flesh. If it's okay with you, be all right. I can write better, not under pain or whatever. Can you remove this thorn in the flesh? God said, no. My grace is what? And God's going to tell some of us. Jesus. Everything ain't going to be popcorn microwave. It ain't going to happen. He's going to tell some of us, you're going to go through some stuff. And it's going to be the trying of your faith. He's going to see what you made out of now, baby. See what you got. You know, when I think about looking at such a reason myself, I had this young man look at Pastor. He said, he said, Pastor, you still, you still pastoring? He said, I said, yeah. He said, you still, you still going, you still going, huh? I guess he was amazed that I was still going. Hang on. He said, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. All I learned to do is put one foot front of the other and trust what God has placed in front of me and walk the path so I'm just telling you hey God loves you he does he loves all of us he cares for all of us but we have to realize too family this is this is not going to be a microwavable uh, experience that you can just dismiss in a, in a little bit we're going to have to figure out some strategies. And one of them is getting God involved. Amen. Say getting who involved? Getting God involved. Getting God involved. Getting God involved. I'm going to tell you something. When you do that, when you do that, you're going to see things happen. You're going to see how things develop for you. You're going to see how things, whatever, whatever God desires for you. Here's the good news Pastor has for you. Whatever he has in store for you, whatever he has laid aside for you, that is for you. That is yours. You access it by the currency that you use to access that. It's not money, it's faith. You access it by faith. So whatever God has for you, that's going to be for you. So I just want to commend you. You're doing good. Some of you, you're here. You're, you're pushing your way through. And, you know, you, you, you have to realize that this is where we are. This is the season we're in. And you trust God for where you are, for what you're going through. You trust him. And you realize that he's the one that's going to bring you through. Can you say amen? Love you. You know, Pastor said that Sunday after Sunday, and that's so true. We love you. We appreciate you. And all of you are special to, him, to, to Pastor. But just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Just keep going. Just keep walking. Just keep trusting. And, and watch God do what he wants to do. And he'll do that. So God bless you. 
And let me say this one more time to you, too. He's an ahead of time God. He's an ahead of time God. He will go ahead in front of you. Prepare what you need before you get there. And you need to realize that that's how he operates. Everybody, you wait till this thing go through. You wait till this season <laughs> finish doing it. <laughs> They're going to they're gonna have a new relationship with God one way or the other. They're going to have a new experience with God one way or the other. So God is good. I'm not going to talk. Let's go ahead and get ready for the offering. And then before we do so, if I tithe an offering, I'm reminded of this joke that was shared. This is what I've, I heard this one. And y'all shared this before too pastor was trying to raise funds for the church he needed some additional funds and things he wanted to accomplish so he thought he would put put out a little challenge to the congregation he said whoever would give a thousand dollars would have the opportunity to pick the three hymns for the next church service so nobody stood up but this one old lady jumped to her feet and she said pastor i do it and she wrote a check out for a thousand dollars the ushers came back and got it Pastor, thank you, ma'am, so much. She said, now, now, which hymns do you want? Which three hymns do you want? She said, I want him, him, and him. Come on, Usher, let's go, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. It's always, like I said, even in their absence, we thank the Lord for our associates and their spouses. Continue to keep them lifted up in prayer. We thank the Lord for Sister Hester and uh, her companion. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Minister Hester there, <laughs> who still is in a little trouble. Those of you who know last Sunday how he got there, but he's going to be fine. Amen. We do some bartering or something. We'll figure it out. <laughs> thank the Lord for Minister Hester and Sister Hester, both of them. Thank God for my companion, Sister Reeves. Love you. I had a pastor call me this week and share it with me, minister, that his wife had gone on home to be with the Lord and had a chance to share with them, pray with them, and, and um, you know, just understand that um, God is with you. God will continue to keep him and um, uphold him very close very close very close you know so well, I'm, I'm grateful that I have a spouse that did not mind going through this and didn't mind putting up with this kind of stuff see didn't mind sharing your husband and sharing one another and all that stuff I'm very proud to have a wife like that a very appreciative big man I can't see her with one of those big hats. <laughs> you know, everybody, like I say, they're talking about the, the, the saying, kiss the ring. You know, a lot of the polit politicians are kissing the ring of certain people. But I can't tell you, know, but I've seen that, and I, 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 I hated that. I hated that, because I always wanted to be just, I just wanted to be normal. I don't want to be something. I don't want to. You know, everybody's above you, you, you above, you got the, you know, they're, they're on a whole nother level. I hated that. I just wanted to be around some real people. People you can touch and hold and they ain't got to be like, mine. make you feel so important and make me feel small. And I'm thankful. I'm just saying, I, I didn't like that at all. And uh, I don't have to put up with that now. So I'm appreciative anyway. So, hey, man, if Sister Reese want a hat, she can get a hat. <laughs> but the, she hasn't made that request. And that's what God is. God is so good. I have, I have a little bit of, uh, y'all better make sure my watch is right here because uh, I've, I've been enjoying this series that I've been dealing with. And I hope that you've been allowing it to sink in. Because I want to deal, continue, I'm still teaching upon resting in God. That, that, that's the title of this series. 
And we've covered quite a bit of ground, amen. We talk about resting in God. Because Hebrews 4 and 1 tells us, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Amen. I want to talk to you from this subject. It's kind of almost like a little bit of a continuation on, on as long as it takes. But from this subject, despite a little longer. Despite a little longer. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise left us of entering to the rest, and that you seem to come short of it. I don't know about you, but I, more than anything else, I want some peace and I want some rest. If God has made it available, I want it. Amen. It's amazing. I know why people fall in love with animals and dogs and so forth. And, you know, it's, it's amazing how just loving and caring they are. You know, you can go to the store and come back 10 minutes later. And they act like you've been going for two months. Just happy to see you. And I mean, I, I just went to the store. You know, what's up with that? And, and they want to play. They want to play. They ain't thinking about where the food coming from. Amen? They want to play. They want to have fun. And, and you know, their lifespan compared to our lifespan is very short. And that's why some people don't like to get attached to pets and so forth because it's very short. But they want to play, man. They, they, they. I looked at, you know, they're trying to tell you that, hey, life is short. Come on, let's play. Let's have some fun. And I, and I look at that and I, and I say, you know what, that is, that, is, that is a lesson that they're teaching. I don't know about you, but resting in God, I, I need some. I want, I, I want to go to sleep at night and, and do just that, go to sleep. I want to go to bed. When I get in the bed, I want to go to sleep. Amen. <laughs> I want to do less of that thing that I call being concerned. Most other people, my wife call it worrying. I'm not worried. I'm just concerned. I want to be able to rest and trust God more. He said, fear, man. You ought to be scared to know that God has rest for you and you don't get it. There's a rest that remains for God's people. That ought to get your attention. You're supposed to be restful no matter what the situation. Pastor, inflation, yeah, uh-huh. Pastor, COVID, all that, yeah, not monkeypox. Hallelujah. Yeah, but God said there's a rest that remains for his people. It could be because we abide under the shadow. <laughs> Can you say amen? But there's a rest that remains to God's people when you trust him. I'm reminded of this, of this mountain climber. He was climbing and this, you know, this mountain and he lost his, 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 his footing and he was sliding and he was sliding down the side of the mountain. He caught hold to a branch and he grabbed that branch. He was holding on for dear life. And he sighed, I'll pray. And he prayed. He said, he said, is there anybody up there? He yelled, help. And he heard this voice says, turn loose and I'll catch you. He didn't know underneath him was a, was a ledge that he would you know, release. And then he looked up and said, is there anybody else? <laughs> Someone say, trust God. And the, the biggest thing that you got to do is, is trust God not knowing. And you're going to have to trust him not knowing how, not knowing how long. Amen. You're going to have to trust him, not knowing how and not knowing how long. Look at Mark 4, 26. We're supposed to be walking in the kingdom of God. We are kingdom children. And look what Jesus said that, that the kingdom is like. Verse 4, 26, 27. And he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed, where? Into the ground. And it should sleep and rise night and what? And the seed should spring and grow up, 
but he knoweth. He knoweth what? He know, don't know how. If you're going to rest, again, I have to em- emphasize that. You don't know how. You don't know how. You can't know how God is doing something. Ah, Lord Jesus, you don't know how. So what did he do? He said, this is what the kingdom is like. A man sows seed on the ground. And he sleep, rise, night and day. Guess what he's doing? First of all, he's, he's, he's sown the seed. He's done his part. You do that by praying and speaking God's word. After planting the seed, he leaves and goes about his duties night and day, say daily routine, without anxious thought about the seed. He goes through his daily routine without anxious thought about his seed. So what are you saying, Pastor? You can't keep pulling the seed up and checking it. You can't keep saying, I think I check on the seed. You don't need to check on the seed. Leave it alone. Yeah. Old folks says, when you give God something, leave it there. Yes, Amen. How come? Some of us pick that thing up before we get out the door. You can't keep checking on the seed. It says he goes by his routine. Goes, minds his own business. That's what he puts. Goes to work, brushes his teeth, takes shower, whatever. Cooks and dinner and fixes it for the smile. They do their routine. But he doesn't keep coming back checking up on the seed. Leave the thing alone. If you gave it to God, then leave it there. Amen. Somebody say amen. And he said, in the meanwhile, that thing germinates and sprouts and grows in a way he did not know and cannot explain. I said, that thing will grow and sprout and germinate in a way that he did not know and he cannot explain. Can I share something with you? Can I share something with you? It'll come up in a way that you don't know how. And that's what God wants you to know. Pastor ain't just preaching. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to show you. We had a situation, you know, when we first moved. Thank you, Father. We first moved here. Came to Oakland. We had a home in Leesburg. And the home in Leesburg... We sold, moved on, put it behind us, sold the home, and moved on. <sighs> About 10 years ago, with God led us, we had to go back to Leesburg for a funeral. So we decided we'd just drive by the old home, see how things was. And sure enough, when we drove by, the home had a for sale sign on it. We go, what happened? The people we sold the home to lost it. So we inquired about the home, what's going on, whatever, found out what happened, they lost the home and so forth, and we negotiated with the bank and got, to, and we bought the home again. And once we bought it, we used it for a while. (laughs) We we leased it for a while. (laughs) And we sold it again. And that was a blessing for us in a way that we did not know how. You see, first of all, how many people get a chance to sell their house twice? How many people, and let me tell you something, this time it was, it's a different price. Amen. That happened in Pastor's life and Sister Ree's life that I didn't have to share. I did not have to share that because that's personal business. That's personal business. But I'm just trying to tell you, you don't know how. I can't get some of you to trust God with 10 cent. I can't get some of you to trust him with giving him a dime. I can't get you to trust him. And all the while, pastor and co-pastor, a handful of people, whoever comes, we just share what we share. All the while, God is looking upon us, smiling upon us, 
because we've been obedient to what he asked us to do. Someone said, you don't know how. I never knew that. We'll tell people that story. And I said, Lord, I don't know if they can handle it. I don't know if they can. I, so I just felt released to share it. This is what God did, family. It had nothing to do with coming to you to ask for a loved offering. Come on, somebody talk to pastor. Had nothing to do with coming and say, oh, you know, it's hard out there. I sure hope y'all help me make it. I told you, I stood here and I still stand here and tell you, there is a prosperity anointing. There is a prosperity anointing. The only reason that we don't even flourish more is because people ain't obedient. Ah, God. So guess what? So what I'm telling you is this. We've been eating off that blessing whether you knew it or not. The kingdom of heaven is like a man sowing seed. He sows the seed. Yeah. And he goes about his business. <laughs> and the seed germinates. Somebody say germinate. That thing will come up. I told Minister Hester, I'm going to pick on you a little bit, boy. The blocks in this building. He was saving for his house, and y'all know the story. And he donated them to the church. Saved the church a lot of money. And I told him, I said, you can't sow a seed like that. And expect you're going to outgive God. And, and the rest is history. God has smiled upon him and God has blessed him. Family, you got to be able to rest. Pastor and co-pastor, we're going to do what we're supposed to do. The clock says 1030, that's supposed to be church. I ain't got to call somebody and say, I don't know I'm going to make it this morning or not. It's 1030. And what's the day? Sunday? What time is it? 1030? So where are you going to be? Somewhere in church. Amen? Are you here, Pastor? So what I'm saying to you, I'm telling you, family, you got to, you, you, you ain't going to rest but understand something about God, too. When he loves you, he's not going to release you to just be like an ordinary uh, a brat. He ain't going to release you, not when he loves you. Those whom he loves, he'll chasten. Yeah, he ain't going to let you, well, I, I, I don't have to obey those rules. I don't have to uh, follow that stuff Pastor be talking about. The devil is a lie. Let me tell you something to you what you're going to run into. You're going to run into a spanking. <laughs> if God, woo, you know, you ever seen the parents? I don't know who this is for, but I'm going to say it. You ever hear your dad when they spank you, talking about, boy, this is going to hurt me worse than it hurts you? I'm going, the devil is a lie. <laughs> and then he'd be tearing that, tearing that thing up, boy. I'm, I'm going, Lord, have mercy. Tom and Lou, and when that, and I now I look back as a as a senior citizen, and I say thank you, Papa. And that's all, Pastor. They understand too, family. I, I shared that personal testimony that you didn't know to get you to see that God can do unusual things. To get you to see that you have to trust Him. You, if you do what He tells you to do. It ain't your job to figure out how it's going to do. You don't know how it's going to come up. That's the part I like about God. God loves a mystery. You don't know how he's going to do it. You don't know how he's going to do it. Somebody shout, you don't know how. You don't know how, family. Your job is to trust him, be obedient, and leave the consequences to him. We drove up on that house. I said, honey, this is a facet. That can't be. What's going on? Grass was this tall. I said, the house is for sale, honey. Let's check into it. We went to go to a funeral. God led us to a funeral. And after going to the funeral, we just thought we'd drive by. Just drive by, see how things go, what it looks like. They done painted or whatever. For sale sign sticking out there swinging. 
I said, right there, Lord, my steps. Crazy, but they've been ordered. And there it is right there. Somebody say, whoop, there it is. So, guess what, Pastor? Pastor, Pastor, I want you to know I'm going, I ain't going to fuss at you and I ain't going to beat you up. I'm just going to tell you. I just want you to see that some of you, God ain't going to let you off the hook. The old folks just tell us not a nine and a half won't do. Amen? So, you got to understand what Pastor say. Can you say amen? Yes. I got me some time today. Ushers, lock the door. (laughs) The congregation and the preacher, despite a little longer, check out their situation. Go to Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. How How can the people of God, God's chosen people, who prayed and God brought them out of that land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. They had a man whom was the go-between between between them and God. His name was Moses. Moses' names mean to be drawn out. Remember, he was drawn out of the river when he was floating in that basket. He had a preordained destiny. He could not be killed. Moses raised by Pharaoh, but Moses was given nothing but a rod and what our pastor like called stick. Moses said, God, what is this? Nothing but a stick. When with a stick, Moses went down. Pharaoh pointed that stick at Pharaoh and said, God said, let my people go. Pharaoh went through a whole lot. And finally, that death angel flew over Egypt, killed the firstborn. Pharaoh said, y'all can go. He let him go then. But frogs and, and lice and rivers and blood turning, uh, rivers turning to blood, all kind of stuff. He was stubborn, hard. He was just a stubborn. But finally, he released God's people. He said, you can go now. And here they are, family. I tell you what, I wish some of all of you could pastor a little bit. Just a little bit. Say a little bit. I wish you could feel what I feel. Because sometimes pastors say, I want to flip that thing. Sometimes I want, I ask God, I wonder what kind of member I would be. And I wonder when the pastor flips and sees my name, does he go, all right. That's my kind of member. Boy, no, 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 no. Don't worry. Don't worry. If he hadn't gotten there yet, there must be a traffic jam. Cause, cause nobody called me. Nobody told me he would not. If he, if, Pastor, it's, it's, it's 15 minutes after. Don't worry about it. Who, 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 who's supposed to meet you there? Brother who? Let me tell you something. I know the man. Traffic jam, phone battery going dead, something's up. Can somebody say amen? Here in our situation, Moses going up to pray to God and get some instructions. And he took a little long. A little bit longer than he thought. And the people saw that Moses what? He, he what? He, he, he delayed? What does delay mean? Somebody said, despite a little longer. To come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, up and do what? Woo! Hallelujah. How do you make a God. Shame on these people. They wanted water. God gave them water out of a rock. They were hungry. God rained down wonder bread manna from heaven. They got to an obstacle where it looks like they were trapped in front of the Red Sea. God blew upon one side and that thing raised up, blew upon the other side. And the Bible said they walked across in the middle of the Red Sea on dry wood. Shame on these people. Here they are. After all they've experienced, Moses takes a little bit longer. Who told them they could set the timeline? Who 
told you you can set the timeline? America? Kind of strange, isn't it? Been over two and a half years and we're still dealing with stuff, aren't we? Because who told you, America, that you can set the timeline? God sets the timeline. And they said, man, we don't know what not happened to this Moses. I'll tell you what you're going to do, man. Yeah, yeah, he's he, 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 he taking too long. Too long. Well, how long is too long when you're waiting on God? The key word was he was delayed. And I want you to know something. Time is your most precious commodity. It must be managed well. If you don't manage it, it will manage you. Let me say it again. It says, if you don't manage it, it will manage what? There is something powerful about time, especially when it's in between events. It's called the meantime. What do you do in the meantime? You still haven't got your miracle yet, but what do you do in the meantime? You're still not completely healed yet, but what do you do in the meantime? What do you do in the meantime? You plant the seed. You go about your business. You trust God. You don't pull it up, and it will spring up, but you know it's not what? Guess what they did? In the meantime, they just got kind of, hey, they just let time manage them. They said, get up and make us a God. Oh, Lord, I got to stop. Don't you know that there's never been a time, ever, where there hasn't been God? In the beginning, God, that was not for God. <laughs> that was for us. There's never been a beginning with God. He's all, there's always been. How far can you look? God. How far you look that way? God. There's never been a beginning with God. So I just wonder, what kind of ingredients do you use to make a God? Get up, man. We're going to give you a task. What's that? Get up, boy. Make us a God. And that's where we are, and that's where so many people are right now. They're trying to use something else other than God. Glory to God. They're trying to use something else other than God to fix this mess. And you notice, <laughs> if it ain't one thing, it's something else. Amen. <laughs> COVID, not trans COVID name not changed so many times. Delta, Alpha, I don't know. Now something else, BA, BA something, I don't know. I guess Bachelor of Arts degree. <laughs> What's the problem? Moses taking too long. That's the problem. He's taking too long. I'm tired of waiting on him. I'm tired of waiting on this. Tired of, every time you turn around, I'm tired of waiting on the pastor talking about do this, do this, do this, do this. It's taking too long. I did it. I, 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 I gave my, my tithe two weeks ago. Ain't that happening? You don't set the criteria. God does. And here we look at the fact that they're going to make God. What would you use to make God? What would you use to make God? El Shaddai, Elohim. What do you use to make Jehovah Jireh? What kind of ingredients are you going to use? What are you going to use? Please tell me, what are you going to use? You remember I told you about the scientists who, who told God we don't need you no more? We don't need you no more, God. We, we got technology. We can clone things, and we can even clone and make a man. Story goes, God came down and said, you don't need me no more. He said, no, we don't need you no more. We can do this. Right, we got cell phones. We got all this technology. We can clone and make men. He said, you can? He said, yeah, okay. Scientists went outside, scooped down, grabbed some dirt, and God looked at him and said, uh-uh, you got to use your own dirt. What are you going to use that doesn't belong to God? What are you going to use to make God? They said, I got an idea. And I said, break off the earring. That's in your daughters and your sons and your mom. Hey, see, they had them back then. You ain't the first one that had an earring. They had them back then. Golden earrings. Amen. Today he would say, break off the earrings from your tongue, your lip, your belly button. Uh, the one that goes all the way around your ear and come back again. Just keep breaking, boy. 
They everywhere. They in Abra, Abra leave that alone. But here, family, look at what pastor is saying. They took almighty Jehovah. They took Elohim. They took El Shaddai and traded him in for Elsie. Traded him in for the mascot of, of, of Chick-fil-A. A calf. A golden calf. And the first thing they said, they, these be the gods that have brought See, let me tell you something. This is what God is after. You see, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get tough. It's going to get tough. You know why it's going to get tough? Because we won't humble ourselves as a nation. And even God's people are kind of stubborn. They've doing everything but serving God and honoring God. Amen. So they made a God, a golden calf. And let me tell you something. You better be careful. If you put your trust in money, that's foolish. Foolish. Had a woman, didn't like the banks. Supposed to be a true story. She took her money and she put it in her mattress. Just took the, all the stuff out and just that, that mattress, just stuffed her mattress over the years, just stuffed almost close to a million dollars. She had to go to the hospital. Her daughter thought about coming by the house and checking on things, seeing how stuff was. Daughter just sat down on the mattress, and it was hard. And she thought to herself, Mom needs a new mattress. She had the people bring a new mattress and take the old one out. <laughs> Mama got out of the hospital, and it took a while before it dawned on what it until she was sleeping one night in the middle of the night, she woke up and said, this is soft. They realized that her daughter had traded her treasure. It wasn't a sleep number one either. You can't put your trust in money. You can't put your, you can't put your trust in money. You have to put your trust in God. What you used to get for $2 now costs 5 you can't put your trust in money. Now you got to do twice as much to give the same thing. So that's all Pastor. They said, man, get up and make us a God. And that's what the problem is now with this country. That's what the problem is with so many people. That's the problem in their lives. They're trying to make it their way. And let me tell you something. Some, them, some, some people have their own version of the Bible. Some stuff they like, they throw that out or keep it. Stuff they don't like, they don't follow. You got, to, you, got to, you got to follow what the word says. Amen? So guess what? They made a God. They said he was a golden calf. But let me tell you something. Whatever you, what, what, what's the point you're trying to make, Pastor? The point I'm making is this. They made an idol. And an idol is anything that takes the place of God. And God must be first place. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. What kind of, what's wrong with y'all today? Y'all quiet out there. Y'all kind of quiet. Go with me to Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. I got about 10 minutes before 12. Y'all doing good, but don't pay that no mind. What an awesome privilege this particular brother had. He would be the forerunner of God. John the Baptist would be the one who would introduce God to the world. It was John who would stand and say, hey, repent, 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 for the kingdom of God is at hand. John had the awesome privilege of, 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 of receiving the Holy Ghost while he was inside his mother's womb. When Mary talked to Elizabeth, <laughs> they said, John the Baptist, leap. Because the Holy Ghost was, came into him at birth. And look at, the, look at the encounter that John had. Look at Matthew verse 3, verse 13. He will introduce Jesus. 
Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have what? And cometh thou to what? Jesus, I need you to baptize me. And you come unto me to baptize? No, no, Lord. Verse 15. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for, the, for, for thus it becometh us to fulfill the righteousness. Then he suffered him. Verse 16. And Jesus went, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am what? I am well pleased. Someone say, Validation from God. John said, no, Lord, baptize me. I ain't worthy to untie your shoes. Jesus said, John, suffer it to be so, so the scripture be fulfilled. Jesus goes down in that water, and our Lord and Savior comes up out of that water. My God, with, with that muddy Jordan River running off of his face, the Bible said the, the, the Holy Spirit, like a dove, flew down, lighting upon him. John, watching all of this. And then the clouds kind of roll up a little bit. And then he heard a voice saying, this is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. John saw all of that. But yet, John runs into an obstacle. He has a situation where his circumstances have changed. He has a situation where everything ain't peaches and cream. He has a situation where he can't get hold to his favorite menu, locusts and wild honey. Read your Bible. I don't know how he did that with those grasshoppers. Did he dip them in that honey first? Or maybe he just dipped them in honey and then roasted them. I don't know. But the Bible said that's what he was eating. But John was free in the willingness to preach and to tell the scribes, Pharisees, you Vipers, you, 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 who, who told you to come? He was out there in the world. But now we find John. Fast forward, the pastor gets ready to close. Fast forward a little bit. We see John, the forerunner of God, in a different circumstance, in a different situation. And now, some of you, you're in a different circumstance and you're in a different situation. This whole nation is in a different season in a different circumstance, in a different situation. Now, how are you going to respond? Oh, let's check on John. Where is he at, Pastor? Well, unfortunately, he's in prison. How did he get in prison, Pastor? He told her, you can't have your brother's wife. You can't, you can't have her wife. You can't do that. You can't do it. Here, here, look, who, who is this scrawny little preacher telling me who I can't have? Herod locked him up. And, and John is in prison now. Prison is something else. It wasn't, they didn't have basketball and lifting weights in his day. Amen. You couldn't get cable TV back in his day. Prison was something else. Sewage ran through the middle. Just a little stream. So what the guy did in cell block C? <laughs> y'all ain't going to walk past that. It will pass your way after a while. So John is in prison. Now, wait a minute. I'm the forerunner. Yes. I announced Jesus. Yeah. So I got a question. I got a question. What's that? Let, let's read. Let's read what it says. Matthew 11. What did I tell you? 11, 1. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John had heard an end the what? The works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and he said unto them, Here's what I want you to ask Jesus. Art thou what? Or do we what? Look for another. And you better watch out because the devil is trying to make some of y'all answer that, ask that same question. So many church people, look around the churches, everybody ain't online. Some of y'all have fallen away. Some of you have fallen off and in just a way you ain't you kind of given up on this church thing and Jesus thing. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, 
when times were good back like in 2019 and so forth. I was, yeah, uh-huh, but see, right now, there's a proving time taking place. There's a revealing, there's a revelation of seeing who's who. Amen. Circumstances have changed. John the Baptist is in prison. Called a couple of disciples and do me a favor, man. He said, what's that? <sighs> Go ask Jesus. Is he the one? Or do we look for somebody else? Can you do me a favor? What, what, what's up, John? Yeah, man, we'll do anything for you, man. Go find Jesus and ask him this question. Ask him, is he the one? Or do we look for another? How can a man baptize Jesus, see the Holy Spirit come down like a dove, hear the voice of God saying, this is my beloved son? Ask a question like that. It lets me know, family, just because you've been strong in the Lord doesn't mean that circumstances can't change. And the, when circumstances change and they're not like what you want them to be, will you still honor God? Amen? When you don't get your healing as quick as you want, when you don't get the financial breakthrough like you want, will you still honor God? So what happened, Pastor? John probably thought within himself, if I am the forerunner of Jesus or the Messiah, why am I in prison? What in the world am I doing? I introduced Jesus. Why am I in this prison? Lo and behold, it's a good thing to know that he, he, no one told him that when he comes out, it won't be for long. No one told him that that woman has a daughter and she's going to dance. I don't know what kind of dance she did, but she danced. And Herod, Herod, old lustful, old joker, told that girl after she danced in front of him, whatever you want, baby, up to the half of my kingdom, I give it to you. Her mama, was, oh, mama, what's over and said, ask for the head of John the Baptist. Do you want me to ask for money? No, no money, girl, no. Ask for the preacher's head. Kill that preacher. Because he's preaching the truth. Kill him. Ask for the preacher's head. And she came back to hear it. She said, I want John the Baptist's head on a platter. Oh, God almighty. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let me tell you something. John didn't see that. But John's purpose and destiny was over. What God had called him to do, he had what? Accomplish. And he exited. But let me tell you something. Why did John question in the first place? The same reason that some of you question, and I'm going to get ready to sit down. Here's what the enemy will do. John had expectations. on behalf of what he thought the Messiah should be like. See, most people thought that Jesus would come as a conquering king. He would come in there, he was going to get Rome right and fix this and the Messiah. And they said, Jesus came in now as a, as a sheep, as a lamb. So John, the Baptist, had expectations about Jesus that Jesus had no intentions of fulfilling. And how many of you have expectations of someone and they don't even know that they have no need of fulfilling? Can I just be honest with you? Can I just be plain and simple with you? Amen. It's good that God gives you, you know, a helpmate and things like that. But, you know, you thank God because they can be many things to you. God gives you a helpmate and so forth. And a lot of times when people go into marriage, like it or not, they come in there with expectations. Y'all ain't going to help me close this thing, are you? The reason John asked Jesus that question, are you the one or do we look for another, is because John's expectations was not met. 
that he expected of Jesus. And sometimes it's the same with spouses and relationships. Sometimes one spouse comes in a relationship with his expectations. <laughs> the spouse come in there and say, party time now. <laughs> I don't have to worry about sinning now, Lord. Illegal. You do that in your wall path. <laughs> and get, and, and get, get in a relationship and find out that your expectations ain't hers. What? Yeah, I, I, it doesn't bother me if I go half a year. If you go half a year. You go half a year? It don't bother you? Somebody say amen. Yeah, child, you know, if it, 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 anything happens, it happens. If it don't happen, it don't happen. Say expectations. And that's what messes up marriages, messes up homes, messes up churches. Because people come in there and they bring their own expectations. This is the way I think pastor ought to do it. He ought to cut them sermons in half. He ought to do this. He ought to do this. This is what pastor no, no, no. no. Don't bring your expectations up in here. I'm going to do it the way I've been doing it. Somebody say Amen. I'm going to be doing it the way I've been doing it, and it, it seems to be working. God has provided. So what are you saying, Pastor? Check your expectations. You know what some persons say, some pe people, you know how they try to avoid being hurt by expectations and not have any? Then you can't hurt me. But John, I believe, family, Lord, Lord, you doing something today because it's so quiet. It's so quiet out there today, Lord. It's quiet today, Father. What you doing? John had expectations that even though he introduced Jesus, even though he received the Holy Spirit while he was inside his mother's Elizabeth's belly, John got to a circumstance and a situation that caused him to question God. Are you the one? I do we look for another. Moses leading these people out there in the wilderness, water from a rock, bread from heaven. They wanted flesh. God sent quail to fall down, fed them. And now, Moses, you take a little bit too long. And they tell Moses, what, 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 Aaron, Aaron, get up, Aaron, and make us a God. Circumstances are changing. And so what happens when your, your circumstances might have changed? Will you question God? Or will you pull one of those Israelites' number and, and, and make an idol from something else? An auto is anything that takes the place of God, and nothing can take first place. He takes first place in our lives, our money, our time, everything, because he's God. Can you say amen? And, John, and, and, and Jesus said, go back, do me a favor. Jesus heard what John asked, said, go back and tell John again. What? Jesus said, go back and tell John and show John again. Go show John again. Do it over. Do a repeat. That's why pastor preached some stuff over and over and over and talked to you about some stuff. Because some of us need a repeat. He said, go tell John again what you see. The lame walk. The deaf can hear and dumb can talk. Blind eyes are open. People are being what? Healed of palsy and all kinds of diseases. And not only that, but people are being raised from the dead. Go and tell John. And here's the, here's the kicker, family. Here's where we are. 
This is what pastor, I, I, I'm trying to bring you. I'm trying to bring you where well, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get you to the level what it's going to take to endure this thing. This thing, this, 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 <laughs> this when it hits, it's going to hit. And I saw pastor say, when it hits, it's going to hit. And people, people crazy. They act like it ain't going to, it's it, it going to hit. You're going to have to endure. You're going to have to endure. Amen. <sighs> Jesus said, Blessed are those who are not offended in me. Otherwise, those who are not ashamed. Hey, you look around now, you see that that scripture about whether there's two or three gathered together, it's coming to fruition now. Can you say amen? Will you still come if there's only two or three? Hallelujah. Will you still serve? Will you still do what you're supposed to do? Or will you be offended and ask the question, are you the one or do we look for another? Or will you go out there and try to make some kind of God like what the world is trying to do? They're trying to make a God and they're not doing a good job of it, family. Can you say amen? So despite a little longer, what are you going to do? Are you going to trade God in and, and, and try to use something else to take his place? That's an idol. Or are you going to, even though you've had encounters with God, you've seen his, his power, are you going to question, the devil going to get you to question, because of your circumstances, are you going to question, Lord, uh, I got some people come to me that now they're worshiping some, some kind of, some pearls and stuff. Really? You, some new day of, I don't know what it is. Really? You're going to give up on God and start worshiping your horoscope. They call it horror for a reason. You're going you're gonna to start worshiping your horoscope. You're going to give up on God and get a Ouija board. You, you really? 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 You're going to give up on God, tired of going to God. And what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You be careful. Make sure that you haven't allowed something to sneak in your life and replace God's position. Nothing takes his place. And you don't get to a point. Let me tell you something about God. Never be ashamed of God. Pastor has so many little things I could tell you. Go to 2 Timothy, Joe, verse 12. I don't share much because I don't know how much you can handle. But God takes care of this Afro preacher. He takes care of our, my wife. I don't wear no $5,000 suit. I'd rather get the one I can and eat for a year. Amen. That's that day. <laughs> Those others, four thousand nine hundred and eighty-nine, <laughs> can go a long way. I'm just kidding. It's a little bit more now. I'm just teasing. Oh Lord, He is so good. Y'all love your pastor. I love you too. I want you to know I'm getting older now and I can't play. Don't have time to play with you. You're going to fix it. You got to fix it. Amen. You got to fix it. God ain't going to let you off the hook. I'm telling you, he ain't going to let you off the hook. You got to fix it. And circumstances now that we face, you have to realize that God wants you to know he does love you. But look how you can, what can happen when the circumstances are not exactly what you want, when your expectations are not met. He can, enemy will try to sneak in there and get you to question whether or not this God stuff works. And if someone can be serving the same God you're serving and enjoying the reaping the benefits of it while you are struggling with whether or not you should put God first. Amen? You'll never be ashamed of God. What, that, what does it say about that? Talk to us, Paul. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Paul has suffered, y'all. Nevertheless, I am not what? For I know whom I have what? For I know. Stand in your feet, too.
Ah, oh, Lord, thank you. I just had to walk that off a minute. I just had to walk that off a minute. Paul, you've been stoned, boy. Matter of fact, you and Silas got thrown in. People beat you with rods and put you in prison. And instead of you and Silas complaining, what did you do? You said, let's sing praises. Paul, do you know what time it is? It's midnight. Let's sing and praise God. Paul, you know what time it is? It's midnight. But what? Let's sing and praise God. Paul, you know where we at? We're in jail. The Bible says they sung praises to God and the prisoners heard them. God's calling for a people. It's not going to be a shame of him. And it's not about anyone else. It's about you. It's about you. It's about you. Don't you look around at nobody else. It's about you. It's about you. God has something with you. He has something with you. He has something with you. And at midnight, they sang songs and praised God. God showed up, made that place, that jailhouse to rock. Not only Paul and Silas was free, but all the other people got free too. Paul said, I know whom I believe. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to believe and trust Jesus. I'm going to believe and trust Jesus. I'm going to give my tithe. It's been over 40 some years. Your pastor said, you know what you could have bought? 40, 40 some years of time you're gonna devil is a lie devil is a lie I know what God has done for me over 40 some years of time I know the ways he's made trees he's blown over fire hydrants he made open up I know property he gave us that we didn't have I know he paid for it in full all that stuff, I know what he's done for us. I know what he's done for us. Paul says, I'm not ashamed. Pastor, I asked God to do such and such a thing and he didn't do it. Paul said, I don't care, man. I don't care. Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Paul said, I'm not ashamed. For I know whom I believe. As pastor, I'm I've been entrusted to be the guardian of your, as your shepherd, to tell you what God wants you to know. It's up to you how you respond. Amen. Because I know whom I believe. And what did you say, Paul? For I am persuaded. Say persuaded. That's what's matter with some of you. Y'all ain't persuaded enough. You're not persuaded. You're not fully persuaded. I mean, has to preach a sermon one, ten, one time about being all in. You gotta be, you're going to have to be all in, family. This, this is where we are now. This is the season where we are. you got to be all in. Hallelujah. <sighs> Isn't God good? Put your hands together and give God some praise. I'll probably think say sometimes that spirit gets on the pastor and pastor like he'd be he'd be mad or something. I'm about to be mad. I'm just expressing what God says. Don't trade God for something else. That how are you gonna trade God for another something to try to take his place? The devil is a lie. Don't trade God. And then don't question God like John and the Baptist. Be like Paul. Know whom you believe and be persuaded.
persuaded. I'm persuaded. Say I'm persuaded. You got to mean it now. Say I'm persuaded. It ain't about nobody else. This thing is between me and God. It ain't about what other people are doing. And let me tell you something. Lord have mercy. It ain't about nobody else. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to somebody. It's about you. It's about you. It's about you. You know what that means? That means you're special to God. And he's not going to allow you to do what other people do. He's not, he's not going to allow you to get by or get away with other what others do. God's going to look at you straight in the eye and say, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to change. This is what I want you to improve upon. This is what I want you to trust me. It's all about you. He's a good God. Amen. How many of you want to enter into that rest? I know I do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's someone who does not know Christ as your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer passive. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you to come into my life, come into my heart, and forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Lord, write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Father, give me the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit is my prayer. I love you and I thank you. You are a good God. And I believe I'm saved. Say in Jesus' name. Some of you say, boy, woo. Fifth Sunday. All right. But I want you to know that he's a good God and he loves you. He cares for you. And pastor, I love you too. Amen. Now do something for pastor. Lift your hands. words fall upon attentive ears. Let my words fall upon ears, Lord, that will reflect upon the fact. You look like you're talking to me, Pastor. Yeah, it's not Pastor, it's the Lord. Whatever we need to change, help us to change it, Father. Press his name of Jesus. Tell him he's a good God. Good God. <sighs> Tell him he's a good God again. 
Oh, my master and my savior, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We give you glory, give you honor, give you praise. We simply say thank you. Again, tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him you're welcome, Lord. Tell him you're welcome, Lord. Tell him you're welcome, Lord. Thank you. Show yourself strong. On behalf of your people. Show yourself strong on behalf of your people. Hallelujah. We love you. We say thank you. You're a good God. We give you glory, praise, and honor. Hallelujah. Despite a little longer. But Lord, you can take as long as you, as long as you desire, despite a little longer. Thank you. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide now henceforth and forevermore. And all the God's people said amen, amen, and amen. Touch your neighbor, I mean, you Look at him and do something. Tell him, despite a little longer, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Say, it's going to be all right. All right. God bless you, family. We love you.